Okay, so as we go through this process, we want to go through the push hands exercises that are for loosening first. Well, we've already covered one for Marshall, but uh, we want to know which ones are which, and you do more of the loosening exercise based push hands to start with, even though the form doesn't organize them that way, and the teaching syllabus doesn't organize them that way. I'm going to organize them that way. And then we're going to um, emphasize loosening the body before filling the body. All right, so my partner takes a back stance for me. And what I'm going to do is just push, and he's going to turn with me, and then he, he's going to soften down. And every time I push on him, he's going to drop his hips, stretch his spine, and just carry my force down to the ground. And uh, here, I'm touching his base, but I'm not threatening his base too much. Um, uh, because what I want to do in this case is loosen him. So I'm lifting him a little bit up. If I was um, more inside the gin, it'd, it'd, I'd be sticking to his base and, and disrupting his base. But now I, I want to get this loose, and that loose, and that loose, and that loose, and then I'll disrupt his base later and teach him how to empty out his, his uh, hip foot alignment to soften to the ground. Uh, so I'm very aware of the base, but I'm not putting the energy there yet. Okay, and we have a rhythm inside this. We, we start doing it faster, and then my partner starts responding faster. And inside of this process, as he does the same to me and push, pushes in, he come forward and I yield. What I don't want to do is run away from him. It's, 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 that's not what unlinking the body is, it's not running away. It's neutral absorption. Because neutral absorption leads to active absorption. So I want to get his body, his energy, push forward, come into me, and then I want to absorb it into my body. So give me a bit more weight so I have something to absorb good. And then if he lifts up a little bit, I let my shoulder rise. So as he's pushing through, I just let it go up because that's where his energy is going. But what I want to do is I want to pull it into my body because if I pull it in, then I can put it back out again. And uh, depending on what frequency I put that energy back out, it can be be more in, in the space of his energy, or I can put it through just a kinetic stretch in, back into his body. So I'm bridging between the feeling of absorbing and activating the biotensecurity to neutralize, or absorbing the biotensecurity to neutralize in an active way. So this energy uh, he's giving me is it's active and stretchy, and don't be afraid to push your partner with an elastic stretch, because you can tune that to life force later. But you don't want to bully your partner with muscle, muscle throwing. When you were, were, are feeling that, okay, I'm getting this down into the facial web, into the ground, you'll notice both my hands move because I'm connecting my hands. What would be incorrect is if I just do this. If my arms are swinging, I'm doing it completely wrong because I'm not absorbing his force into my arms. So as he pushes, whoop, now it's in my hands. Then I can, can, can put his energy back in. Or I can put it into a punch. So I have to be linking my whole body. And I really want to feel my, my hands becoming alive from here. I'm stretching to there. I'm putting it to there. I'm putting it to my feet and absorbing it in the biotensecurity of the body. So as you do this, feel that activate biotensecurity everywhere and neutralize it. Now, I'm bridging into the neutralizing, being passive to the neutralizing, being active. Passive neutralization basically dissipates after absorption. Active neutralization brings it back or it spins and rotates it back. So this movement of the way that you yield. Now, I'm moving in this way because I'm navigating around my own tension and loosening my body. So this type of exercise, normally you'd have the hand up there and then you'd remove the hand and go into issue. So the way you lift your hand to there, you just touch and let it go and get used to this. Oh, how am I going to navigate this force? And uh, how am I going to do roll back? Were, how do I lift my arms motivated by his energy? And uh, you can go through different postures as you're 
yielding to this force. If I go straight back while his hand's there, I can be absorbing it through the rest of my body. So then as, it, as, we, as we move through and you come back, then I don't need to go anywhere. I just send it straight down, stretch, and put his force back onto his body. So in the beginning, you need this to get your body to activate and to move, to do your Tai Chi form, to, to drop into the ground, activate by tensacrity. This is really, really important. This is all part of that loosening type of, uh, type of training. I'm not concerning myself with him hitting me that hand or anything like that. This is all about loosening and learning how to move. The other push hands exercise generate timing for fighting. This is just a simple exercise for me to learn how to connect my body, how to neutralize in a passive or active way. But it has to activate fascia in my body. Now, as he takes his hand away, all that weight that he's energy he's put into me, it's, it's full and it's, it's, it's inside me. I've, he's been giving me his energy continuously and I've been absorbing it. So now there's this, oh, I want to, want to play with that energy and get it out of my body because I've been activating the biotensecrity and it sort of it makes you feel alive and full of energy because mass has been stimulating. Even though I haven't been rebounding it, it's energy building, building, building to want to rebound. So if you get this right, the first thing that's going to appear in your mind is, oh, I'm absorbing all his energy. I'm absorbing his personality. I'm absorbing his belief structures. I'm absorbing his pain and his joy. All the subconscious stuff that's inside his energy field when he pushes on me gets unconsciously transferred to me. And I'm storing my body like a battery building this biotensecrity activation through his energy. You want to have high quality training partners. You don't want to have dirty training partners who have bad lifestyle habits and, and unbalanced thinking because your closest friends are the ones who are going to affect you the most. The people you do this stuff with become your closest friends if they're not already. So be very, very selective about who you train with. You train with garbage people, you become garbage. It's just very, very simple. You train with high quality people, your quality becomes high if it, not, if it isn't already. So, so there's an exchange of karma happening when you do these exercises because his physical touch, I'm absorbing into the biotensecrity. I'm absorbing it into the conductor of my unconscious information. Uh, ensure you have high quality training partners. Okay, so we did this um, uh, feeding, feeding uh, uh, his backhand onto my front foot and then we switch and then he, he goes the other way and then I, I'm absorbing. And as we go through this, we obviously want to do both, both legs as we go through the exercise and the way we soften, the way we connect the hands. And your hands are free, free form. Vital, breathe and absorb into the feeling of vit vitality. Now, as you're doing this, you're on the bridge of neutral recovery, healing, and gently coming into a connected stretch. If I, um, as a beginner, if he pushes on me and I put too much stretch, I know what I'm doing, so I'm going to catch him. But the stretch is a type of intent. What I want to do is make a habit of absorption, so as he pushes on me, I'm just moving and yielding and absorbing, and then I slowly put gentle connection onto it and start linking my body through this. And go, okay, yep, there's a, a soft connection. I don't need too much linkage. So non-intent is maintaining minimal linkage for mass maximum effect. Remember our shunting exercise go from unlinked recovery to peak electric discharge. So when you want to intend some power and knock someone out, you can. But the, to, to build the bridges up the vibrational scale, each time you link in a bit more, you have to make sure there's a proper bridge underneath the linkage. So we do these loosening exercises with the intent of loosening, and then the intent of all oh, fullness and stretch and catching our partner and working with these shapes. Okay, so the seven point body push, you do all seven points in this way. So it's not just one, two, you go through each one. And as you're doing it, so let's say he's doing knuckles down and I'm doing this, the hands have a tendency to want to catch in more. And you'll play and touch your, touch your partner as you do this. 
and just let your hands connect. So as he pushes in there, I connect the string to my fingers. Now he continues to push, and okay, I've got that, that connection to him. So he's activating my biotensecrity. I'm steering my biotensecrity into the center of tension of his body and, and bringing it back into him. My hands are listening tools first, bridges to connect to his tension, and then I let the energy back through gentle stretch. Now I do it with as, as little linkage as possible, and then as I increase linkage, I'm building bridges. Okay, so this is normally done on purely this uh, vertical circle, uh, and the way you yield, some people will do it very low and have a big forward bend, other people do it higher and have more of a, more of a downward hollowing. Then as you come up to the next one where he opens the hand and you stretch back, make sure you really stretch your spine out so you don't pinch any nerves in there. If you've got a bad back, I don't even suggest doing this. Just do it more up if you have any back problems. Practice lifting your hands up. How are you going to touch his bridge? How are you going to get your hand onto his body? And so here I connect my fingers. Whoop, there's my connection and then I can put it into, into his body. His energy, I reticulate it back. So in order to do that, I have to send this to the ground, absorb into my stretch, bring my hands up, make my hands alive, and then eventually put that back onto his center of gravity. Very lightly. We only want to be under our partner and put their springs back under their feet and under their biotensecrity. By him putting energy in here, in order for him to do that, there has to be a certain amount of energy up here to put into me. He can't put his root down there and push me here. Um, with his whole root, because it's down there. So, so most people, when they push, they're going to lift their body weight up to a degree. So only a person who has mastered biotensecrity that can, that can drop down and put weight through a stretch. Most people don't do that. They lean dead weight on you. So take that in, activate the fascia, become more spring elastic than them, and then put the energy back into their body through a gentle stretch. Okay, so, so all these, um, these exercises, the same with the next one. He pushes in the hip, and then I, I stretch and open. Once you've done the seven points, you've got most of the stuff you need for the form and the push-down sets. And uh, you can start playing with this as soon as your body starts to fill. From the previous exercise, my body's already full. It's already grounded and active. I can start putting that out. And then when, when you want, you can start, oh, okay, there's the opportunities that start coming in for, for rebounding. Now, you don't want to put your own energy back into it. Even though I'm intending the issue, I'm just giving back energy he's activated inside me. So what I'm not doing is, is doing, okay, I'm going to run that out and, and, and go to the edge. I, I want to avoid that type of intent. What I, I want to do is, he's put this in, I'll give it back. You know, he's put that in, and I'll give it back. And where it goes inside my body, touch my hip, there you go. And uh, where it goes inside my body, and how I yield and activate, it's fully up to me. I can put it all into my front foot, as he's going instead of my back. And then when I want to issue off the front, there's, there's that, that connection that starts to form. We're activating biotensecrity and slowly linking biotensecrity to move from neutralizing, dissipating to neutralizing, actively rebounding like a trampoline. So when we've got this force in our body and we're stretching it through the body, we have this feeling of, okay, I'm full, I'm connected, I can put an energy out. And... Uh, you have a sense of you're under your partner. It doesn't mean you have to uproot your partner. You're developing groundedness, and you, just by knowing them and you're under them, you can keep moving with it without having to uh, bounce them. And then uh, up into the next one, and we do, a, we do a circle. And he's got to control this, and I send the energy down in a circle. And he's lifting my shoulder up to there. I just follow and stretch. Let him take, take my shoulder wherever he feels tension. Now you do this in a very free form way. So he can spin this any direction he wants. And I just, I just follow this, this pattern. 
and then the inside of the shoulder for that arm, and then we, and we get this active. Now, when he's going in here, I've got to get that energy down to the, to the limbs and the feet, and uh, get it all active and stretched. This uh, sense of opening the energy up and getting the energy in. Once it's there, while that's happening, you can, as you push, I just put it straight back in. Don't actually have to move. Um, we move to loosen, we move to store, we move to activate by 10 security and do the, go through the storage process. But in the end, he, he touches, that's, that's enough. The energy's there. That's how much he gave me, that's how much he gets back. He just put the energy back on the center and cut the root slightly so it can affect the person. So these are uh, seven point body push positions and working through it's about getting the energy down, loosening the body, moving from uh, neutralizing through dissipating, uh, letting energy go, to neutralizing through storing like a trampoline so that you can issue, yield, neutralize issue. It builds the basic concept for yield, neutralize issue. As you start adjusting the personalities of these energies into rebounding force and ward off, roll back, press, push, and all the other energies, the mechanical situations upon which the person touches you will draw an ideal intrinsic energy out of you. So you don't think, oh, I'm going to do this one. The person touches you in a certain way. Ah, this is what we're going to do. And uh, you follow the energy. So this is where following comes in. When you stick, yield, follow, there's a translation of, of what you need to do inside that. What comes out? That's optimal. That's optimal. So maybe a rollback energy, maybe an attacking ward off instantly, maybe an intercept. You'll have usually in there in the beginning a sticking energy that combines with a seizing energy. So when a person puts a force on, on the body, say you've got both hands up and he pushes on me, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, go into his body and intercept and, and seize his joints. So now that I've got, got the seize, his body's like, oh, okay. So the intercept and the seize come together for a lot of energies to work, especially if you don't want to hurt the person, intercept and seize, it locks them up a little bit and you walk away. It's, and they're a bit confused why they can't express their energy. So seizing is when you've, put, you're, you've gone in and intercepted and you're inside their body, now I just squeeze the joints a little bit and that's your seize. And it, I use this to, to get the mental connection. I go in, intercept, seize. Now inside that seize, you can, you can get more stick. And uh, by touching the base and absorbing and creating more magnetic stickiness inside the, the nervous system and the facial web. So you can play the intrinsic energies in a, in a fun sort of way. Reality is you must probably never need any of the stuff in martial terms, but it's like a, a chess game. You don't need chess, but it's a lot of fun playing it. And something happens in your awareness when you play a lot of chess, where your thinking ability, your, your IQ, your, your, your getting out of the box type of uh, process starts to amplify. And with Tai Chi, it's, it's a very, very deep puzzle to uh, figure out. And the only way you're going to figure it out is by looking at it from a principle-based view, not a traditionally-based view. The form is last. The principle is first. And you don't even ever even have to express the form in the traditional way. You can just go principle, pure MMA. And, uh, and some people like to do that. I wish there were more of them that were doing it. Now, some people are gate holders for tradition, so they take principle, tradition. But if you go tradition and try and figure out the principle, it's a very long, slow road. So for me, I'm, I'm, I, do, I do much more of the principle MMA in application, and then the principle traditional model halfway for teaching. I don't teach the full traditional model because, well, I basically didn't learn it. Um, I don't know anyone who's learned the whole tradition. Not a single person. There's very, very few people out there. Master Wong didn't learn the whole tradition. Chen Man Ching didn't learn the whole tradition. Maybe a couple elderly sons of Yang Cheng Fu learned it and they certainly didn't teach it to anyone. So, you know, it just isn't there anymore. As much as people want to say, oh, I'm the gate holder. 
their layers. They don't have the whole tradition. They might be the guy holder of a watered down version, but um, it's, it's pretty much gone. And it's the culture that does that. You know, only the eldest son can get the whole thing. And depending on the personality of the eldest son, whether they really want to give it and want to train it, want to do something with it, want to hold it, keep it secret, that's, that's a cultural thing. So in Tai Chi, learn the principles, make it yours. And to be honest, you put it into MMA context, an internal MMA, you end up with a far superior model, far superior training system. Why? Because you're always on the edge of evolution. You're, you're on that wave of evolution, making it better to accommodate modern needs, to accommodate someone with a knife, to accommodate how to manage a gun, to accommodate how to manage a wrestler who takes you to the ground. And uh, what do you do when you're on the ground? And so forth. So when you, when you take on a, an MMA perspective to your training, your mind is free. You can apply the principle uh, to anything you want. You can create new intrinsic energies to, to suit new needs. Like most of the intrinsic energies in Tai Chi aren't really usable on the ground. You need a very, very different type of snake slipperiness to manipulate forces on the ground. And I spent a lot of time pinned on my back, issuing people upwards and setting up rollovers through the floating people and creating intrinsic energies. And there's only a very small um, area of intrinsic energy that are really suitable for ground fighting. Uh, so you, that's one area where Tai Chi's got to develop a lot of, a lot of these energies. All right, so, so this seven point body push done for loosening in a free form type of way. When I, my partner touches me or I touch my partner, the feeder's duty is to find tension and pressurize it. So when I start just working on this upper, upper tangent here, this upper quarter, and just pressing into my partner's there, I'm steering through his tension. So I'm pushing on his tension to force him to stretch that out while I'm pushing on it. So I give the impetus for him to stretch on and he stretch, stretches on that impetus, which means that he's not using that muscle to stretch, because if he uses that muscle to stretch, it's not going to reduce tension. But if he uses my pressure on the muscle to motivate the stretch, then the tension is going to release. So the feeder's job is always touch tension, fill it, so the person can ride that filling and empty it, or should I say loosen it to be more correct, and, and get the elasticity stretching. All right, so we'll leave it there for, for those exercises. Have fun with it. Keep a free-form mentality. Anything that touches you, you want to steal the energy. You want to load it into your facial web. You want to put it into a stretch. If you touch a spring, that spring just told, stole the energy of the touch. Your whole body is a complex series of springs. Steal the energy. Pull it through the body, however your partner touches you. So this is just a couple basic ideas, but there's lots more ways. You can put the, the fist on the inside of the thigh, on the outside of the thigh. Uh, you can put the fingers on to, onto the solar plexus so the person has to hollow. Uh, take a, a live blade that's not too sharp and then put the live bl blade on your partner. So if his finger is a live blade, then I, I have to soften and do exactly the same with that. So the, the blade can't create friction on me. So you might use a butter knife. Uh, from, from your kitchen to, to do this, but you'll feel the poke, you'll feel the cold steel, and oh, okay, I don't want to create any. So if he tries to cut down, I have to roll down with it to the other side of the knife so it can't cut me. This is just basic Tai Chi, but you're just improvising with, the, instead of using a hand to yield, you take into consideration friction that's needed to cut, and you move with it and roll off the blade so you minimize the cut to a scratch because it can't do that, it can't cut you. If it just presses there, it has to be a razor blade to cut you. And then you yield, 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 yield to it. And then you do all these seven point body pushes and yielding exercises with a butter knife, with a blade. What I like to do is have wooden knives in the, uh, in the school and the wooden blade on it, you sort of go, Duck, and the person feels it, Boop, the person feels it. And they have to yield to these cuts. If you have a look at system and knife fighting, they've mastered this particular exercise, put it into Tai Chi in a very freeform way, fantastic. It's an excellent art. Those of you who already do Sistema, very good choice. Well done, it's fantastic art. Put all these internals through Sistema and you have something that's next level. Very, very, very good system. Okay, thank you for your time, thank you for your help, and uh, see you in the next video. Have fun listening.